Hello everyone, my name is Maricon Andrea Esteban, taking up Bachelor of Technology and Livelihood Education, major in Home Economics. So in this video, I will be discussing about summative assessment. So what is a summative assessment? The definition of summative assessment is any method of evaluation performed at the end of a unit that allows a teacher to measure a student's understanding, typically against standardized criteria. So, a summative assessment takes place at the end of a unit or course of study. It assesses the student's level of knowledge, skill acquisition, and content understanding. So, the purpose of summative assessment is to gauge students' comprehension of the material presented at the end of a particular unit of work and is often measured with a grade or percentage depending on the subject. So there are many purposes of summative assessments in instruction. But the main goal of any assessment is to provide clear communication between the student and the teacher. So, summative assessments are used primarily to document student performance, to monitor and record student proficiency, to give students grades, to report to parents, for selection into special programs, for conferring of honors, for establishing a record of performance, for accountability, it is also used as evidence of student learning to evaluate teachers and for college admissions and employers. So sometimes, summative assessments are used formatively and formative assessments are used summatively. So summative assessments may also be used to plan instruction and seat work, which is also a formative assessment could be thought of as a mini summative assessment. So the primary difference between summative and formative assessment is in the use of the evidence. The primary purpose of summative assessment is to establish a score or grade to represent what students know and can do. So as a content is thought within a course, educators should evaluate how well the information is absorbed and retained. This is where summative assessment becomes useful. By assessing the students at the end of a module, course, or even the entire program curriculum. Because summative assessment provides teacher an insight how well their students have mastered the delivered content. So next is the planning of summative assessment. So in planning summative assessment, we should consider these steps. So the first step in constructing a classroom summative assessment is to review the criteria for high quality assessment. So the first question is, are there clear and appropriate learning targets? Second, what method of assessment is the best match Third, will the evidence allow valid inferences? Fourth, how can error be minimized? Fifth, will the assessment be fair and unbiased? Sixth, have students had the opportunity to learn what is being assessed? Seventh, will the assessment be practical and efficient? Eighth, will the assessment be aligned with instruction? And lastly, are the consequences of the assessment positive? So let's proceed to the examples of summative assessments. So example of summative assessments include chapter test, unit test, semester test, common test, final papers, reports, and presentations. So chapter test is an assessment tool for educators to measure chapter concept mastery and allow students to review the chapter materials prior to an in-class chapter test 
developed by the teacher. Next is the unit test. It is also the same with chapter test. Third is the semester test. This is also the mid-semester exam or the final examination. Next is the common test. A common test or assessment refers to a method of evaluating student progress that can take multiple forms. For example, multiple choice or short answer questions. Another examples are the final papers, reports, and presentations. All of these assessments allow educators to grasp potential teaching shortcomings and student knowledge gaps in real time. So that's the end of my discussion. Thank you for watching.